This is a Ford Ranger, Ford F-150's little brother. This test example also has an over 3 liter engine, making this a real monster truck by European standards. Ford Ranger is currently a mid-size pickup. Ford F-150 is a full-size pickup. Back in the day, Ranger was a compact pickup, so it made sense to offer it stateside along with the F-150. Now it's just too small a gap between them and pickup sales are declining, so no Ranger for you, North America. By the way, in some markets, Ranger is also known as Mazda BT-50. This generation is on the market since 2011 and it was given a facelift in 2015. The car is offered either as a single cab, extended cab or a double cab. There's either a 4-cylinder 2.2-liter diesel 130 or 160 horsepower or a 3.2-liter 5-cylinder diesel producing 200 horsepower. Earlier models have Euro 5 engines, later examples are Euro 6 compliant, which means they have to take AdBlue. The bed is locked independently of the central lock. Ford Ranger doesn't have keyless access or ignition, so you have to use a key, always use a key. This test example has its bed covered with uh, protective plastic. There is a 12 volt socket in there and this optional mountain top roll cover. Now to open it, you need a separate key, which is a nuisance, but that's not as much of a nuisance as actually opening the thing. I already unlocked it. Now you have to pull it towards you. Then you get to press it and you have to give it a good pull to open it. Now, it's not as easy as it looks right now on video. I actually had to ring up Ford and ask them how the f you open this thing. Mother! It's a hard knock life if you got a pickup truck. In double cab version, the bed is about the same size as a Nissan Navara that is about 155 by 155 centimeters, about 111 by the floor between the wheel arches. Depending on the engine and gearbox, Ranger can carry between 1033 and 1270 kilograms and tow between 1.8 and 3.5 tons. Gross vehicle mass for this test car is 3.2 tons. I like the cockpit. Compared to other pickup trucks available in Europe, Ford's dashboard is the most modern, at least in the wild track trim. There are digital displays on both sides of the analog speedo. They show information from trip computer and infotainment system. Speaking of infotainment system, I'll spare you the story about how bad SYNC 2 is, because by now you're probably ordering your Ford Ranger with SYNC 3, which is much better, much more responsive, much more intuitive. There are also two 12 volt sockets in the front, one in the back, USB port, 3.5mm jack, a cubby at the bottom of the center console, average size glove box and storage under the armrest. Compared to Volkswagen Amarok or Nissan Navara, there is no storage on top of the dash. How's the Ford Ranger to drive then? Well, with the 3.2 liter 5 cylinder engine, it feels very agricultural, more so with the automatic gearbox. Because the first few gears are short, so up to about 30 40 kilometers per hour, it just goes oh, 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 changing gears like that. Okay, it's the same in the Amarok automatic, so I get it. It needs short gearing, at least a short first couple of gears to get it moving with uh, all the potential heavy load in the back. However, unlike the Amarok, even the most powerful Ranger is two-wheel drive as standard. You can engage four-wheel drive, four-wheel drive high on the road and it will work up to about speeds of 110, 120 kilometers per hour. But that affects maneuverability, so if you want to maneuver in tight spaces, you're better off with uh, being in two-wheel drive. Now, Amarok, in automatic, most powerful versions, it comes with uh, four-wheel drive permanently locked as standard, and that also affects its maneuverability. However, it doesn't break traction like this car. The Ranger, when you take off and you step on it, not very much, but you step on it and there is nothing in the back, it will spin its wheels. 
The 3.2 liter diesel in this test example used around 11.5 liters per 100 kilometers combined. Ford claims it will do less than 9 combined. I tested the Ranger alongside the Navara. Both cars drove up the same sandy course, up and down two sides of the same hill. Despite optional rear diff lock and better tires, Ford felt less capable than the Navara. Having a manual gearbox in the Navara gave me better control over the revs and speed. I had to have the Ranger in manual mode. I'm sure some of you are expert off-roaders who know how to tackle rougher terrain and maybe Ranger in certain circumstances and in the hands of an experienced driver would fare better. Here, however, Navara is the winner. Back on tarmac, watch out for these huge A-pillars and wing mirrors. They create huge blind spots, so when you approach a junction or a pedestrian crossing, have a good look around on both sides if there's actually anything behind them, okay? That's how big they are. Now, reversing is easy thanks to backup camera. However, the Ranger doesn't come with a 360 camera like Nissan Navara. On the other hand, Ford offers a bunch of safety systems, uh, some of which I missed in the Navara, like the lane keeping assist. Like the Navara, it has a collision warning and brake assist. Unlike the Navara, it also comes with adaptive cruise control, which is very convenient on long journeys. Front parking sensors are optional, but if you want to use the car in business, all cars, regardless of trim level, are ready for digital tachograph installation. I also appreciate comfortable seats. Lumbar support adjustment is standard across the range. These handles on A-pillars are good not just for passengers to grab during off-roading, but also for getting in and out of the car. Toolkit is stored behind the rear bench. Underneath it there is some storage, but Ford doesn't want you to keep the seat up, so it's going to be tricky to carry something dirty back there. There is a big tunnel running through the middle, but the floor is lower than in the Navara, so there is more headroom. And this is a nice touch. If you don't shut the door properly, ambient lighting shines red instead of blue. Prices of Ford Ranger start at about 28,000 euro, more than the Navara, less than the Amarok. This wild truck double cab 3.2 liter automatic with options costs around 50 grand. And how do you like the new Ford Ranger? Let me know in the comments below. Subscribe, rate and share new episodes every Friday. But before we get to the next Friday business, how about you watch some of my other reviews, which I linked. I'm randomly pointing now in various directions because I'm not sure where I will link them, but they are linked somewhere around here. So check these out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.